Hello everyone and welcome to Handmade Hero, show we could a complete game live on stream. Uh, today we have a rather unsavory task that is, uh, well it's not going to be pretty I'm sure, uh, I, I don't want to mislead anyone. It's definitely one of those days where either we get incredibly, incredibly lucky and everything works smoothly the first time and it's great and it's happy, or the much more likely scenario uh, we are stuck sitting around wondering why we're not getting the GPU to do the thing that we ask it to do, uh, only to find out many much, much later that we specified some little thing wrong or the GPU driver has a bug or other fun things like that. Uh, so that's not going to be pretty, but uh, we hope that the results of getting it all working will be pretty which is to say that we are trying to add a little bit of per pixel interpolation to our lighting today and that could be pretty great uh, once it once it actually is functional all right so let's take a look at what's going on uh, in that code first however uh, we are going to uh, as we sort of update it we're gonna make one little change here to help folks who are trying to compile on other machines um, basically there is a, uh, we've kind of talked about this multiple times, but shaders unfortunately compile differently on, uh, different GPU drivers. Um, the reason for this is because, uh, shader compilers are kind of haphazard in a lot of cases, uh, depending on the vendor. And there's a bunch of things that a shader compiler may not catch. Uh, you know, just errors, standard errors uh, that you might accidentally put in a shader that, you know, if it were C++ or something, the compiler would definitely catch and tell you no matter which compiler you're using. Uh, but on shader compilers, they're not really that strong. Uh, they are oftentimes uh, too permissive or just have bugs in them or anything else. So the fact that these shaders compile and run on this particular AMD card does not actually mean that there are no bugs in the shader code. It just means that there's no bugs that this particular shader compiler happens to care about or notice. Um, so people who are compiling on more compliant shader compilers, uh, such as an NVIDIA compiler, as you can see from this note here, is talking about the GTX 1070, which is a graphics card from NVIDIA. Uh, or I should say graphics chip from NVIDIA, uh, not a graphics card. A graphics card, of course, there's many different graphics cards that have a GTX 1070 in them. Uh, when running under NVIDIA shader compiler, what you can see here is that you get a syntax error. Um, and that syntax error is due uh, to the fact that we incorrectly specified the version on that shader. Uh, we were specifying, I, I believe, 150, uh, whereas now we use shader model 330. Now, not all of our shaders actually need uh, version 330. However, if we're going to use version 330 uh, for anything, we might as well use it for everything because as far as I know, there's no bonus to having some of your shaders use a lower shader model. The only bonus is if all of your shaders use a lower shading model because then you can work on other machines, uh, lower end machines, right? Uh, so that's my assumption anyway. I don't see any reason why uh, we shouldn't go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna do that just to make it easier for folks who are compiling on an NVIDIA card who wanna follow along with the series. So again, uh, this is not a problem we're having, uh, but it is a problem that other people on different machine configurations are having, uh, and so we were going to try and fix that. Uh, so here's the situation with the current uh, rendering, and we can kind of see that if we run our uh, lighting solution, we produce our, our uh, voxel uh, lighting solution, which is what we want to now integrate into the rendering, so we'll get some lighting in there. Uh, and uh, that's that's really what we're going to be working on today. Let's go ahead and, and change those shader models to 330 uh, and see if that uh, we can still make all of this work properly. Uh, how do we... I guess we're always showing the voxel regardless in this case. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and just verify that everything still runs. So here's that version directive. You can see that we have 
uh, version directives here that are uh, 130, 150, 130, 150, and so on. Uh, and I guess, so the thing that I'm not 100% certain about uh, is whether changing to version 150 would have fixed everything, or if you actually need 330. Uh, but I don't think there's a difference between those two things. I think that, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I think like 330 and 150 are sort of synonymous version numbers because if I remember correctly, like one shade of 150 was the one that came out with OpenGL 3.3 or GLSL 3.3 rather. So aren't they sort of the same? I don't know. Um, but either way, uh, in fact, you know what, let's see if we can get some documentation on that. Uh, no, so I guess, I guess it looks like 1.5 was actually 3.2. Uh, so I guess 3.3 is actually the one we're using, which is one step above that. Uh, now, I don't know exactly what we're using that requires 3.3, uh, but again, should be okay. Uh, so I'll just go ahead, um, oops, uh, and make that change for now. Uh, again, what we can do later if we want to um, is we can go ahead and start thinking about after the, the you know, uh, rendering is completely done and when you get closer to shipping the game, if what you want to do is take a spin back through and see if there's a way to reduce the version number down, right? You can always do that. So during development, we, you know, don't really have to worry too much about what this number is uh, because it just means that, you know, certain people wouldn't be able to develop maybe on older hardware, but development is not really where you want to spend your time trying to be uh, maximally compatible. Uh, that's just not a particularly good uh, use of time. So you typically want to do that only when you get more towards the end of things um, and so on. All right. Uh, so as far as I can tell, all of the stuff that was working before uh, is working again. So that's relatively straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and kick that back uh, to Kim and friends and uh, they can see whether or not that helps them compile on those other cards. Obviously I don't have one of those cards uh, in this machine so I can't really test it, uh, but I will go ahead and, and ping it back. Looks good. Why did it change? Hey, why did it change my? Why did it change my dash to a? I don't want that. No, turn off. Turn bad. Bad markdown. No. Oh, no. Mm. Can I do anything to make it not do that? GitHub, why why you think I want that? I don't want that. Is there an escape character for Markdown?
Hmm. Well. Mark down escape character. How do I escape a back tick within a code block? I feel like this would be the kind of thing Stack Exchange would be good at. No, that's not what I want. Oh, wow. So you have to use HTML's ampersand notation? No, oh, that's only for this. I don't know. How do I insert a dash in Markdown? Seriously, man, I just don't even know. Let's try some things randomly. If I backslash it, I'm assuming that wouldn't do anything. Oh, wow, that was lucky. All right. So apparently a backslash escapes a character. Who knew? Well, there you go. All right, problem solved, surprisingly enough. Um, that should be that. Uh, I don't know that there's anything else that we've got to do here. Let's take a look at that shader layout issue one. Uh, well, let's look at this one too. That's probably not really something we should be looking at, at the moment. So the platform layer should be updated to request a 3.3 context. That we also haven't done. So let's just do both of these bugs right now. Um, I don't see any reason not to. So we're just going to have to pass when we do OpenGL at Tribs. Right now it's 3-0. Uh, we're just going to have to ask for a 3-3. Three, three, uh, and then that would be it, I think. Um, and I th think that's everything. Good deal. Uh, so I think that's everything that people were having trouble with. I'm not 100% certain, but we'll find out. Um, I don't know why this is still a bug, uh, because somebody said some stuff that doesn't probably make any sense, uh, but they never really followed up on it, even though Martin's tried to ask them. Um, so I don't really know what the deal is here.
All right. Anything else we should do on here? I don't think so. Um, these are all just bugs we sh can fix when we uh, know what this is about at all. Uh, so we're probably not going to use that one anymore. So we'll probably close that one out later, but we'll leave it in there for now. All right, so I think that's everything we needed to do in order to help maintain the code base for other people who may be doing other things with it. I know a lot of the people like Kim, for example, who are commenting on those port to other platforms uh, as well. So there's a bunch of stuff that just they may need or uh, that can help them out. And we just, it's good to basically have um, <clears throat> some way that they can continue whatever it is they're doing without having to worry too much. So I think we're back to where we were before. Uh, and now we can focus on the task at hand, which is if you take a look at what we did last weekend, um, well, last Sunday specifically, uh, we produced this handy dandy voxelized version of the lighting solution um, that basically tells the, the uh, I shouldn't say tells, doesn't tell anyone anything, but uh, which encodes a number of sample points and those sample points have specific lighting information uh, recorded along with them. Now, when these lighting points are recorded, uh, they are provided as voxels now, <clears throat> which could be looked up in, say, a 3D texture uh, or anything else. Now, it's not quite the same as saying that uh, they are literally voxels like... Um, I should be clearer about that. It's actually a voxel lookup scheme is a, is a more accurate way to say it uh, because effectively what you're seeing here is not a voxelized version of the lighting, but rather a series of lighting sample points which do not have to lie in, in any particular location. And then they are simply binned into a voxel based on which voxel they fell into, right? So that's, that's the only uh, real part that's voxely about it, but we need that part about it so that the graphics card can effectively look up where the points are, um, where those sample points are. So what we want to do now is we want to try and figure out, and when I say try and figure out, I don't really mean that it's necessarily logistically hard. I mean just it's, you know, GPU gyrations. We want to figure out how to get these pieces of information down onto the card so that they can be um, processed, right? So that they can be quickly looked up and used to interpolate the lighting solution. Uh, so what we want to do is take this render here, uh, which you can see is rendering without any lighting at the moment. Um, and we want to, and has these big you know, colored blocks and the white ground temporarily for uh, just, you know, for lighting testing purposes. And we want to take that and we want to have each of these, uh, tr you know, triangles that's being rendered here. We want them to use that lighting solution to interpolate between uh, the lighting samples that are nearby to whatever the surface is that's being shaded. So that's really all we're trying to do here. Uh, and in order to do that, we've got to get that uh, data down on the card. So what we're seeing here is not data that's on the card at all. Uh, this is data that's just on the CPU. And what we're doing is we're just sending down uh, tons and tons of little cubes and draw letting those cubes show us where the lighting samples are, right? That's, that's the only thing that's going on here. Um, so not, not particularly great, uh, to say the least. So... Um, what we want to do now is start that process. And again, this is just going to be a really onerous process of trying to deal with the GPU. Uh, there's nothing particularly interesting about it. There's no particularly tricky aspect of it at the moment uh, because we're not even trying to create that lighting on the GPU. Uh, we're just trying to do that lighting uh, on the CPU and send it to the GPU, which re remember is a quite a bit easier. Uh, because we don't have to worry about how we're going to create it exactly in GPU land. All right, so let's take a look at what's happening in the render group. Uh, you can see in, in world mode here, we've got 
uh, the lighting textures uh, structure that we computed. And you can see that we're creating very specific stuff here. We've got two textures uh, that are 4096 long. They are linear, like there's just a one dimensional texture. Uh, there's nothing else to it there. And we also have a lookup texture, which is um, a three dimensional texture. That texture is 26 by 26 by 32. These are 4096 by one, effectively. Uh, or by one by one, you know, that they, they have no other dimension to them. Uh, and so if we want to specify these, uh, we have to be able to specify these additional textures to the card. Now, in order to specify these textures to the card, uh, we, we kind of have to introduce what's effectively a temporary solution. Because remember, we probably will never actually want to do this in the shipping version of the game. And the reason for that is that we probably don't want to compute the lighting on the CPU. Now, I don't know that's 100% true. Ooh, really. We don't really know that's the case. I mean, one of the things we could do is try to write a really fast version on the CPU that did uh, lighting computations and then actually send it down. That is something we could consider doing. I, uh, you know, it's not the weirdest idea in the world, but it is a pretty weird idea. Uh, and not the least uh, of the weirdnesses of that idea is just the fact that even if we make sure that the CPU code is highly optimized and does run well in a 60th of a second on the CPU side, we still have the problem that the uh, data that has to get transferred to the card keeps going up. So now we have to transfer uh, an eight megabyte texture to the card every time. And while that may not really be the end of the world, it's definitely the case that the more uh, bandwidth per frame transfer, bandwidth per frame you introduce into the game, usually the worse. Um, so if we could just send down the lighting information, which would be much, much smaller, uh, and then have the card compute everything it needs on its own, uh, that's probably going to be more, not only faster, um, if we can make it work reasonably, but it also it will reduce the total bandwidth uh, from CPU to GPU in a nice way. Because uh, so far we haven't had much GPU, uh, CPU to GPU bandwidth utilization. So it'd be nice to just keep that generally low because it means then we don't really have to think about that aspect much. Like we're not gonna be sitting around wonder wondering like what we're gonna do to make sure that the card always kind of takes that stream in uh, nicely and efficiently. So, all right, here's our lighting texture. Uh, what I'm gonna do is basically just put in, I think, uh, what, what amounts to a special purpose way to accept this data. Um, and I'm not gonna think too hard about it specifically because, as I said before, uh, it's not really something that we're, we're going to use, right? It's not something that's gonna have to ship with the game. Uh, it's not something I'm anticipating shipping with the game. So I more or less should be able here to just put in essentially a special purpose routine that does nothing but transfer this data. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and call it lighting. Uh, or lighting transfer. Um, so if we go down to the, let's see here. If we go down to the lighting transform structure that we're going to need. Uh, well, actually, should be right here, shouldn't it? Render entry lighting transform. Uh, then all we really need to do here is just have a way of sending these down. And I guess what we know here is we know the layouts of these things. Um, and they can just mostly be implicit. Right, we know that we're only ever get, gonna get this as a submission of this stuff right here. Uh, since we're only gonna get it as a submission of these things, uh, we should be able to just take this as is uh, without any fuss. So where the, um, where the push entry itself uh, gets pushed, I will just have to have a way of pushing one of these on. 
And since we don't use a union right now, although we could very easily now move to using a union um, because we don't have as much traffic going down, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add this in. So where we do a push uh, render entry, or sorry, render element, don't ask me why we called it element here and entry there, probably just the ha hazards of writing everything on stream where it's harder to pay attention to details such as that. Uh, this push render element call here will give us what we need in order to push the lighting on. Uh, so if we wanna go ahead and put one of those in there, here's all the lighting code, uh, right? What we can do is just come up here and say, all right, let's, let's go ahead and have an inline call uh, for push lighting. And if we go ahead and push a render element of this uh, form, what you can see here is uh, we probably want to use the standard format for it, which is just group and type, um, because we don't need to do anything special like this one here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a push render element for render entry lighting transform. That render entry lighting transform will come back, uh, I believe, as something we can um, I should call that dest, I guess. Uh, something we can write to. So assuming that this person who calls us, whoever they are, um, is going to pass us one of the textures, uh, I guess I'll call that source since we're copying from one to the other. I think all we really need to do uh, is just sort of copy the, the various elements of this in there uh, and we're done. Uh, and that should be about it. Now the only requirement is that that stays around. I'm not gonna copy the actual data in because again, this is not something that we need to think about really in that way. Uh, so all I'm gonna do is say uh, that the destinations, uh, you know, the information from the destination here is gonna get copied directly. So at that point, That's pretty good. Tell us a slow morning. Uh, undeclared identifier, render entry, lighting transfer. Uh, I agree with that, but shouldn't this have expanded that type out? Uh, oh, do it in both places. If I had just decided to use that everywhere, I suppose we would have been fine. Uh, all right, so I think that's about it. Uh, and now, I guess for since this is lighting textile here, we could also just call this an F32 uh, because we really don't care about this format information just yet. All right. Uh, so now what should happen in theory um, is if we were to do one of these calls, so after we compute the lighting and we want to send it down, if we take a look at what's going to happen here when we call this output lighting call, um, what's going to happen is we want to make sure that the lighting gets sent down to the card uh, using this push lighting call. And what you can see here is that when we do... Um, output texture debug, that's the thing that creates all the push cubes. Uh, so right now we don't really want to do that because we already know uh, that that's you know, the correct thing. So instead what we want to do is push the lighting down like so, uh, where we push down the group uh, and the textures, or rather we push the textures down to the group, might be the better way to say that. Uh, and that will push one of these onto our, you know, our render um, stack. Now what should happen when we do that now is we should get an assertion in the OpenGL code uh, that it's received a, you know, a, a token it doesn't recognize, right? And you can see that happening here. So here's the loop of interpreting uh, the various things that come down the render, uh, you know, sort of the render command set. And you can see that, you know, it's, it's 
missing a case for that one that we just added. Uh, so if we want to now, we can go in and actually add something to handle that case. And uh, again, this part of it's probably fairly simple. Uh, yeah, famous last words, I suppose. Uh, but we basically just need a case uh, that's identical to the rest of these, just taking a different lighting transfer, uh, taking a different final port, port there. And uh, what we want to do now is we want to actually take a look at what's in there and uh, send it down. So you can see, uh, again, I'm just doing exactly the same thing we were doing before. I'm peeling off the part uh, here that we wanted, uh, and then I'm casting uh, to the type that I needed to get. Right. So at this point, we have the entry. And what we need to do is we need to submit four pieces of texture data from uh, that, you know, from that structure. So we need to su submit each of these down as a texture. Uh, and so what we expect this to look at here, uh, look like here is like a GL um, texture update call, right? Uh, so we need a GL text image kind of a thing. And we could use GL text image or we could use GL text sub image. I'm going to use text sub image uh, at the moment just because, actually, you know what? I should be on docs.gl though if we're doing this. Um, because I just want to make sure at the moment that the graphics card knows we're not trying to allocate a texture. Uh, we're just trying to specify a new image for that texture. So if we take a look at what uh, we've got here, we're in GL3, obviously. Um, here's that GL text sub image call. And I just want to fill this, this uh, data out with what I've been given. So there's going to be, uh, I guess, two different flavors. Here's the one for the 1D textures. Uh, and we've got the GL texture 1D coming in here. Uh, and we want to specify a couple different things. First of all, there is no MIP map at the moment uh, for, for the two 1D textures. Probably won't be. So the MIP map level is always going to be 0, the log level. Uh, the X offset is going to be 0 because we're specifying the whole texture. The width is going to be 4096 because we sort of hard coded that at the moment. Uh, although in the future we could sort of expand that. Maybe we'll allow you to specify it. Who knows? Uh, there's a GL enum format here. Uh, the format in this case is what we're submitting it as. We do have, uh, for the P next anyway, uh, we do have four different values. So it's a GL uh, RGBA texture. It's actually got all, all four components. Uh, we've got a type. That type is floating point at the moment. Um, so it's going to be, I guess it doesn't quite, there it is. I'm like, it doesn't quite have it in there, but it does. Uh, and then the data pointer. Uh, so the, again, just is just a simple way of, of sending down this information to the card. Um, like so. Uh, and then we've got one more kind we've got to do here, which is the GL Texture 3D uh, call. And that's for our 3D one. And you can see us doing uh, a little more complicated dance here with height, depth, format, uh, and type are the same. Uh, the level and target are the same, data point are the same. But these are now three dimensional. So this is basically specifying a sub volume inside the texture. We don't really want to specify a sub volume, we want to specify the whole thing. So we're just using 0, 0, 0, and the full width, height, and depth. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. The other thing we could do here, I guess, uh, since there's not really a point in not doing it at the moment, uh, in case we want to play with resolutions uh, in an easier way, what I could do here as well is just say uh, light data width, right? Something like that. Uh, and then when we come in here, we could just specify this as light data width. 
Um, <clears throat> now, Uh, so we don't really care right now about anything regarding this because like I said, I don't even think this is something we'll probably use particularly much. Um, you know, I, I don't know that code of this nature will be shipping because I don't know that we'll be doing any lighting on the CPU. It may all be baked on the GPU by that point. But uh, the point here is simply that if you take a look at these uh, GL calls here, we are specifying a width. Uh, that width is the full width of the potential set of data that we specified the textures, uh, but we didn't probably use all of that. Uh, so what we could do instead is just remember what the highest number we used was and only transfer that much down because we know that's how much data we're actually going to use. Um, again, I don't really care about that even remotely at the moment. It's not the least of which because um, even if we were going to ship this code, uh, this is the small part of the problem. This 3D texture over here is much larger than either of these two are. And so uh, slightly reducing the bandwidth on the 1D image transfers is probably not gonna make a difference uh, just based on um, uh, the disproportionate size of those things. So if I go ahead now and do the GL text subimage 3D call, I'm gonna specify the GL texture 3D uh, because that's what we're actually going to be using. And then I'm going to specify the rest of these things exactly as you expect. There's the level uh, and there's the base. And now I just need to specify the various uh, sizes here. There's the width, um, there's the height, uh, and there is oops, the depth of the texture. And then we just need the format uh, and the type. So uh, the format in this case, uh, this is just a single U16. So the format is actually just going to be a single value. So it's just it's just going to be like the red channel of the texture. Uh, there's there's no other information in it, and we've got an unsigned short, uh, which is an offset into the lighting information, uh, and so that's pretty much all the information we've got here, right? Um, that alone is pretty much enough to transfer all of the lighting data down to the card. The problem now is we actually need some place to actually put it. And what you can see here is, although we're calling GL texture 1D, 1D, 3D, um, we have not bound any textures, so we're not really targeting any textures here. Uh, so what we want to do here is something like a bind texture uh, to put a texture into the slot that we're about to specify. Uh, and that's where we get to the part where we actually need to allocate the textures right? We need to have some textures that we've allocated uh, that can be used here. So when we do a GL bind texture, uh, we're going to need a place to get these. Since these are going to pretty much just be global textures that just kind of sit around, uh, we can also just assume uh, that they're things that we got in here, right? Uh, so what we can do instead, for example, is just say, all right, uh, let's go ahead and uh, make a GL uint here for the different textures that we're going to have. Uh, lighting P next, um, lighting C, lighting lookup. Uh, and so these will just sit here for the moment uh, until we have um, you know, some better idea of how we want to handle them. And then we can just use those here. So this lighting P next, lighting C, lighting lookup, uh, those are gonna come off of the, the global OpenGL because they are just textures that sit around. Uh, and that's really all we need. Uh, so what we wanna do here, uh, oh, and I guess the other thing we need to do is make sure that these uh, constants are actually specified um, in a place that can be accessible. So we want to go ahead to, uh, in fact, we probably, if we were being reasonable here, we would probably want to say 
uh, that this stuff now kind of just lives in the platform layer since it is actually a render, something that it has to um, uh, work with the renderer. All right. Uh, so the only problem that we have encountered here, oh, and that's a 3D. Uh, the only problem that we've encountered so far uh, is that 3D textures obviously were introduced to OpenGL subsequent to the initial version of OpenGL in Windows, uh, which is very early. Microsoft decided to stop updating it. Uh, because they wanted people to use DirectX, not surprisingly. Uh, so uh, we have to go ahead and do another cut and paste to get ourselves uh, this GL text sub image uh, 3D call. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Again, nothing fancy here, just the same. Oops. Uh, thing we've done multiple times. <clears throat> uh, so here is text sub image and here is text image. I'm going to want both of those. Uh, the reason I'm going to want both of those is I'm going to need GL text image 3D to allocate uh, the texture. So I need to have both of those available to me. Uh, so here we are. Those are the two calls that we actually need. Uh, again, we have to specify uh, the loading code as well. Still draw buffers. Yeah. Uh, and now we should be loading those and we should be able to call them, I think. Uh, did I do that wrong? I did. There we go. Okay. Uh, so now we can call those just fine. Uh, the only thing we don't have is the identifier for GL texture uh, 3D. So let me just, well, in fact, it's right there. I, have, I was going to search for it, but I didn't have to because it was sitting right there. And <clears throat> uh, now we should be good. So uh, what will happen now is if we actually ran this, uh, we would get an error because, well, presumably we get an error, uh, because we don't actually have a texture allocated. Uh, so we should get an error uh, that says that that texture handle is invalid uh, or something to that effect. Let me see what we actually got. Oh, um, we're in release mode, so we can't identify that variable. I'm assuming it hasn't given us any additional information, but I'm assuming that is exactly what I said. Since it's on the uh, text subimage 1D call, presumably uh, the error is that the, <clears throat> well, I guess I don't know. But presumably, uh, the error is that we haven't allocated the texture yet. That's what I'm hoping anyway, uh, because that was the one that I was expecting. If it's not that, then I suppose we're, uh, we're in a little bit of a bind. But uh, moving along under that assumption, let's go ahead and find out what we can um, do for the allocation there. I'm going to hop into the OpenGL code. Uh, where we allocate our frame buffers and such, and just try allocating those textures now um, every time the settings change happens. All right. Uh, so I'm just going to call delete textures um, on OpenGL here three times. Uh, and again, I'll just 
free these textures. Lighting P next. Lighting C. And lighting look up. Uh, and then I will just allocate them. So I think that should do it um, in terms of generating texture handles. And then we just have to specify the size of each of these. So a text image uh, 1D and a text image 3D. Uh, we should now be able to specify these. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually call that. Uh, so here's text image 1D. Uh, again, the target in this case, and I guess I can just kind of make these happen alongside their respective folks here. GL bind texture, GL texture 1D. Uh, so, <clears throat> don't ask her what I just did there. there we go. Uh, so now we bound the textures, we specify the textures, so we just have to fill in the parameters to these text image calls. We should be good to go. Um, I can also unbind uh, the textures. Uh, at the end, just in case, uh, to clear everything out. So now we just need calls that will actually put something in here. Uh, and uh, the way we're probably going to do this is just by specifying the size of the texture without actually specifying any contents. Uh, and the contents will be filled in later. Uh, so this parameter will just leave uh, as zero, which I believe we're allowed to do to just set the size. Uh, yeah, you can see here that if data is a null pointer, the texture memory is allocated to common texture of width width. You can then download subtextures after that, uh, which is all we really want to do. So here we've got target. Um, we know the target is always 1D. We got level, which is zero. We need an internal format. Uh, the internal format has to be floating point for the PNX texture. I believe, am I right about that? Yeah. Uh, and as you can see, it's a mixed texture there. It's got floating point values and it's got um, uh, U32. And we could choose to specify those two things uh, separately. And in fact, you know, looking at it, it may have been smarter to make two U32s in the C texture. Um, and then just V3s for the PNX texture, but it's hard to say. So I'm thinking, you know, it's... You know what, that reminds me, we didn't... Uh, before I finished, finished saying that thought, uh, for the lighting C here, uh, this is not float. Right. Um, so what we want to do here is presumably just stick with with uh, with floating point storage and have it so that it will just uh, correctly set it to what it needs to set it to. Um, in the shader, we'll just convert between the two. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, finish filling those in. So. Yeah, I would say for Gildex, uh, for the that internal format, I would say what we probably want to do here is say that it's going to be GL float, right? 
Uh, well, I guess we have to specify RGB float. So let's see here. It's gonna be RGB. Looks like they don't by default define that one, uh, but it's okay because we actually do have it. Uh, so it's GL RGB uh, 32F. Right, RGBA 32F. Uh, the width is going to be that uh, lighting data width. Or, uh, the border value, obviously zero. We don't have any texture border stuff happening here. Um, the format of the pixel data is RGBA. Uh, the type of the pixel data is GL float. And then we've got uh, that zero in there. Uh, so same thing happens here, only this time uh, we pretty much, yeah, we, we pretty much don't need to store anything fancy this time. Uh, we're just using on standard color, it's just a standard color texture. Uh, and then in bind texture, I'm sorry, in uh, text image uh, 3D, we've got the same process, but this time uh, we're going to have to do <clears throat> uh, the full width. Uh, height depth call. That's 2D. There's 3D. Uh, so there's the, again, same set of parameters. We've got the target specified already. We got the level now. Uh, the internal format is just the red channel. Uh, we've got a width, height, and a depth that we know. Um, it's the lighting lookup values. like so. Uh, there's no border. We've got a format. Um, I think the internal format here is still just red. Am I wrong about that? Maybe not. How about R8? There it is. So I think now all those are specified properly. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we've got that in the border now. Now we just need to specify the format and the type. Uh, again, in here, this is a single channel, so this is, should just be GL red. Uh, and the type in this case is just gonna be the unsigned short. Um, now those are kind of academic because we're not actually passing any data, but uh, we probably wanna make them reasonable. It uh, looks like R8 is not defined, uh, probably because we've never sent down a single uh, sort of mono, mono texture before. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab that in there and add it to our collection of extended texture formats here. Uh, well, actually, uh, this is an R16, though, isn't it? Because I did say it's unsigned short. I'll grab the R8 as well. All right. Uh, so now what we want to do is just uh, clean that up. Let's see. We want it to not be R8. Um, we need that to actually be R16. So now we want to see if we're getting this transferred properly. Uh, let's go ahead and see if that's actually true. All right. Uh, so now we're able to maybe, in theory, transfer the texture down. Uh, we, we don't get any errors. We don't know that that means that it's working properly. We just know that, you know, <clears throat> there isn't an obvious an error so bad uh, that it gets complained about. So uh, let's take a look here and see now as far as output lighting is concerned. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say, let's do something really weird here. I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, let's do the push lighting. At the end, when we do output lighting uh, textures here, 
Uh, let me just make sure this is doing what I think it's doing. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna do that here. Although I guess I guess we can't quite do that here. I just want to send this solution to the card, uh, so that when it when it finishes doing output lighting textures, um, it will actually send it. Uh, so when you hit it, you know, you do the lighting test, you send the lighting textures down, then they will be on the card and they'll just, you know, they'll just stay on the card. Uh, and so then we can render from those textures. That way we don't have to update them every frame, just in case it turns out that that texture update is really slow at some point uh, while we're testing, uh, we don't have to worry. So now, you know, in theory, we hit F1, we can see the solution, then we can flip back. Those lighting textures should now still be on the card. Uh, <clears throat> so we should be able to be using them now in the middle of the render, right? Uh, that's, that should be, that should be working. Uh, so now the question is just, well, all right, if we want to actually use those in the renderer, how would we do that? We've got these extra textures there. Uh, so if we take a look in the OpenGL code at how the shaders are working at the moment, um, really we're just talking about uh, changing it so that we have some way of sampling lighting inside uh, the render, the basic render, right? So here's the ZBIAS program. Um, you know, uh, <sighs> oh, me. I am tempted to add in compile ZBIAS program, um, so again, this, the fact that we have version 330 that we specify every time, I'm tempted to just put that in the shared code. Uh, I won't do it yet, but it's something to think about. Anyway, uh, so if we take a look at what's going on here uh, in our compile ZBIAS program, what I wanna do uh, is I wanna have a way of specifying lighting in here. So you can see that this is, uh, you know, in fact, all of this stuff is kind of old. So this, this stuff is, we don't need any of this stuff that we were using before. Um, <clears throat> so for example, um, yeah, just looking at the blend unit color that we're outputting, we don't really need any of that anymore. So all of this stuff is, is more or less uh, unnecessary um, and we should probably get rid of it. Uh, in fact, we can just get rid of it. Um, there's really nothing we need that for, right? Uh, so all we need to do now is we need to actually be providing these textures so that they can be looked up into uh, as part of this this portion of the program. Uh, and we also need to make sure of a couple things. Well, we may not need to because uh, we may use texture calls that, that make it so that it won't happen automatically. But uh, basically what we need is some way of sampling from the uh, voxels uh, lookup texture and getting the light information out that we need. Now, uh, in order to do the first step of that, we're just gonna do the same things that we have been doing, which is to specify uh, some samplers in here. So what we wanna do there is just say like, okay, uh, we've got a sampler uh, 1D. Uh, 
uh, two of those and one sampler 3D so that we can do uh, like pnext sampler, c sampler, and lookup sampler. Uh, and in order to figure out the locations that we should be sampling from, Uh, we have fundamentally the same problem uh, that we had in the actual CPU side code uh, to figure out where we're going to look. So we're going to need additional information here uh, that helps us with that. So first we're going to need the minimum corner of our voxel lookup. Uh, that's going to tell us how the, you know, that's going to give us basically the basis so we can subtract away that minimum corner and get a position uh, relative to the corner of the voxel. But then the other thing we want to be able to do is have some way of converting, once we have that relative position, have some way of converting so that we can figure out where in the voxel we are in terms of individual units, right? So we also need, in addition to the min corner, we need that incel dim, right? So then when we come through here and we have the actual position value uh, that we're looking at, I don't know what light P is here exactly, uh, but world P is the only thing that we actually care about as far as this is concerned. Uh, so that when we come here to compute the lighting, uh, what we're actually effectively going to do uh, is say like, uh, you know, vox P equals world P minus min corner, and I guess we could say vox min corner. Uh, and then we can also say uh, like voxel index effectively is going to be the voxel p uh, times the inv cell dimension. Right? Uh, and I guess really we're never going to use that uh, otherwise, so might as well just put it like that. Uh, so yeah, so once we have that piece of information, uh, we now have sort of the indexing values for the voxel uh, in question, and we can look up into the 3D texture at that point uh, to find the, uh, the correct element, right? So what we want to do is we want to uh, find a 3D texture sampling call. Oops. So here you can see probably the code that we would want to use. Uh, remember, this 3D texture is not really a texture. It's more of a lookup table, right? Uh, meaning that the elements in it don't represent anything that we can really draw. They're just indexes, and those indexes are telling us where to look in another texture uh, to get the information we were looking for. What that means is we definitely don't want to invoke any bilinear sampling, and we don't really want to use any kind of fractional lookup into the texture. We just want to look in a specific single location and get out the information that is contained in the texture at that point. And so if we look at what we probably want to get here uh, when we uh, do one of these texel fetches, what we want to do is we want to take that texel fetch and provide integer uh, coordinates to it so we will get back exactly the value with no blending, right? Uh, and uh, in order to do that, we need to convert, uh, we need to truncate uh, to an IVEC. Now, I don't know if we can actually specify exactly what to do here in terms of rounding versus truncating, uh, but I assume that we could. Uh, so, 
so floor is actually fine for our purposes. Um, in this case, right? So we can just do something like this. Uh, and I guess since we have an IVEC3 here uh, that we're going to want to use, something like that. Uh, after flooring it, we also want to convert it, right? So at that point, we will have an IVEC3. That's the integer coordinates in the voxel where we are. And in theory, at that point, we can uh, fetch from the voxel. So again, here's my 3D sampler. I'm just going to say I would like to fetch from that sampler. I would like to fetch um, from this location. Uh, and uh, we don't really have to specify a lot because we only have one level of the texture. So that's the basic idea. Uh, one problem that we have here, and I'm not really sure to be completely honest with you, I'm not really sure how uh, uh, Shader Model 3.3 will allow us to get around it. Since we have a texture, we don't actually want it to sample the texture in floating point. We just want to sample the texture uh, in integer. Now, thankfully for us, uh, the integers that we're representing here are only 16 bits wide. So actually, when this red channel comes back and it has a floating point value in it, we can actually just convert it to integer for free, right? Uh, we can just uh, convert it to an int. Uh, and then we have the index into the other texture uh, and off we go. So for example, we can just say, you know, int light index. Uh, and then from there, we can texel fetch all the rest of our information, right? Uh, and what we can do is since we said that light um, i was not a valid value, we can say that while light i uh, is zero effectively. We can now gather all of our pnext values and all our other values for that matter. Uh, so now we're just going to do a texel fetch on each of the other two text, uh, textures that we have lighting pnext and lighting c. And all I'm doing here is just trying to extract that data. Oops. So you can see what I'm doing here uh, is I'm fetching out of our texture, uh, out of our lighting lookup. I'm trying to fetch what the first light index is that we're going to want to use. I'm going to loop over that index uh, and say, as long as it's still not zero, I'm going to keep going. Uh, I'm going to fetch at that point um, the, 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 I guess I should do it like this, uh, the two values from the textures that we've got. Uh, so that's the pnext uh, texture and the lighting C texture. I haven't passed any of them yet, although we kind of do know exactly what we're passing. We're just passing light I um, and lod level zero in both cases. Um, so we're going to texel fetch those. And we're going to end up with two different values. One is the light color. That one we can just use as is. It should just be uh, the correct RGB value, like so. Uh, and lighting P next is going to have to be extracted. So first, we're going to take the RGB to get that light position. And then we're going to take the light I, uh, which is just going to be uh, it, the, the next one to loop on. And if it's 0, we'll break out of the loop. Um, so that's how we would fetch our lighting. That's really all there is to it. 
Uh, you can see that it can be kind of expensive if this while loop has to do many times. Uh, at the moment, we don't really have any um, particular need to worry about that because uh, we don't have a whole lot of lighting samples in necessarily, but we'll have to keep an eye on that as we go forward. Um, so again, taking a look at these, what we want to do here is say, okay, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, what we want to do here is say, all right, we've got this lighting information uh, that we've we've processed. What we want to do is take the um, take the light colors, I suppose, that come in. We just want something that will allow us to process this a little bit. Uh, we can just take the light colors that come in and just modulate them at the moment or something like this, right? Um, sum them together, who knows? It doesn't really matter. Uh, we just need something to show if this is working at all. Uh, and so, you know, I'll just go ahead and, and uh, maybe average them together uh, or something like this. Uh, so here we'll just do average light plus equals light P. Uh, and I guess we don't know what the light count is. Uh, so yeah, there we go. And once we have that average light, we can do surface reflect times average light, and off we go. Uh, so there's a big old nasty shader. Um, and in theory, uh, if we got that compiling, which might take a bit because, let's see here, uniform parse error. Let's see what's going on there. So the semicolon. Let's see, can we, let's, let's, uh, get some more data here. All right, vertex errors, fragment errors, program errors. Uh, vertex shader was fine, fragment shader was not. Uh, lighting lookup. Did I not call them that? Oh yeah, these are totally different names than what I said. It's not good. Uh, Penix sampler, C sampler, lookup sampler. Let's try to get those correct. That was not good either. Um, Boolean expression expected. Uh, that's a fair statement. So not equal to zero should help you out there in understanding what I meant. Um, let's see what else you got. Cannot convert from four component vector of float to three component vector of float. I would never dream of asking you to do such a thing. Uh, where is that happening? Ah. Wow. 
Well, who knows why, I don't understand why sometimes the AMD driver gives you the error message in here. Did that not, hmm. Let's see what's going on there. So GL draw arrays has generated an error, probably because use program begin didn't work properly, or well, I don't really know why. Um, so anyway, uh, we currently are, I guess, compiling this properly. We're not getting an error on compilation anymore. Uh, but of course, we're not actually setting any of this information. Uh, so we're not setting any of these samplers uh, or this uh, the min corner or the inverse cell dim. We're not setting any of that information, uh, so we probably need to. However, uh, that I don't feel like that would have caused an error in GL draw rays, so I'm a little worried about that because I uh, can't say I know exactly why that's causing that to happen. Um, yeah, not great. Um, but again, these uh, calls here are just uh, going to have to be bound one way or the other, so we might as well do the work to do that uh, first, and then we'll try to figure out why OpenGL is unhappy, as it often is, and we'll go from there. So first of all, we've got to get uh, these... These two, min corner and imfseldim, uh, those have got to get added in here. Uh, and then when we do OpenGL uh, create program here and want to link the samplers, in addition to texture sampler and depth sampler, uh, we also want these other samplers in here, right? Uh, so we're going to want, and I'll just, let me just move this down. Uh, we're going to want PNX sampler, C sampler, and lookup sampler. Uh, and so the other thing we were going to need to do is have a place to actually get uh, that Voxman corner and Vox M seldom. So those are going to have to get sent down along with uh, the other lighting information. That's not really a big deal, but uh, we're going to have to do it. Uh, and so in here, we just need a place where that can actually be uh, specified. So inside the Z bias program, I'll just add those in here. And uh, now we should be able to specify those. Uh, so when we do use program, uh, here is our use program begin. Uh, we want the Z bias program, which is this. Uh, and we can boxman corner. And seldom. Uh, and those now are things that are going to have to come in. Uh, along with the lighting. So I'm just going to assume that we get these. 
because they're easy enough to pass through. Uh, and then in the platform layer, when we're going to go ahead and pass them through, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say like, all right, lighting textures, box swing corner. Uh, and I think that's really all we need. I can now just specify when we do the render group, uh, when we uh, specify these, the, uh, the push lighting, I can just pass them along. Uh, so we know in cell dim, uh, and we know min corner. Uh, and so the render group here, when we have that uh, push call, uh, we would just have them in here. So voxman corner, voxman seldom. Had the wrong structure there. There we go. Uh, so I think, I think that's about it. Um, now, in theory, uh, once we run this, probably, yeah. Um, so probably nothing good will happen when we run this. It's probably going to be a disaster. Uh, we should at least bind some textures to those texture handles. Um, I would have thought we would have just gotten black. Oh, and we did. All right. Um, so uh, if we actually bind those textures now, I'm not anticipating good results. Probably we'll still just end up with black. And then we're gonna have to go through a really long, uh, arduous process of debugging to find out what has gone wrong because there's just too many moving parts. And of course we have no visibility at, oops. And of course we have no visibility at all into what the graphics card is doing, like literally none. We can't even run a debugger on it um, on this platform. Uh, so, uh, where we have our um, use program begin here, you can kind of see us binding uh, the textures here, uh, where we bind texture uh, zero and texture one. Uh, those textures are in order of what we call them in the uh, in the link textures call. Oops, sorry, link samplers. Uh, so you can kind of see here we've got the texture sampler, the depth sampler set up. Uh, so what we need to do here is the, the PNX sampler, the C sampler, lookup sampler uh, have to be sort of specified in there. Now, uh, the, the kind of crazy thing here is that I don't know if the depth sampler slot, I assume that that will correctly just fold if we're not using it because we don't use it in the peel version. Uh, but anyway, when we do use program begin right here, so what I need to do is I need to set um, these other textures. So texture zero and one are spoken for, texture two, three and four are the ones that we're using now. Uh, and we're just talking about basically binding new stuff to, to these, right? Uh, so we've got OpenGL, Lighting lookup, open gel, lighting C, and open gel, lighting P next. Uh, and now, in theory, we've bound our textures, right? In theory. 
Now, the only thing we know is that we're not getting any obvious errors from the GL. That's it. That's the only thing we know, right? So we have no idea what else uh, is going on here, none whatsoever. Uh, so let's try to figure out uh, what else is going on here uh, and see if we can't maybe get some progress. Uh, I'm guessing we won't have time to actually, uh, um, like we won't have time to actually get uh, everything working today. That'll probably have to be a job for tomorrow, uh, but we can at least try to get started on that. So inside the OpenGL shader, let's start by trying to see if there's anything we could draw that would be simpler, right? Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is say, well, maybe we can just do something uh, where we pick the brightest light color and pick that, just in case there's some other problem with our lighting. Well, I don't know. Um, like, what if we just picked the first light sample? Something like this. So we just said, okay, uh, we're gonna texel fetch. Uh, there's our, our lookup. Uh, we get an index out of it. Uh, we're going to um, just kind of get rid of this notion here. And we'll just say that surface reflect uh, is going to equal, I'm just gonna overwrite the surface reflect color uh, with the light P uh, and what, I'm sorry, with the light uh, C here. And I'm gonna set light C to zero. And in here, I'm gonna set light C to be equal to whatever the, uh, the light C that it gets is. Ooh, we already have one of those, sorry. Um, Uh, so that's all I'm going to do. For starters, just again to simplify that a little bit, I'm going to keep simplifying it down. Uh, so, oops. All right. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to make sure that we're actually still drawing reasonably i'm just going to set uh here as an as a just a test make sure that we're actually drawing i'm going to set use light c equal to just pure red okay so we're not actually seeing that um which means that we're never getting in here right uh if i did go ahead let's say i set it to green inside the loop uh, and red outside the loop. Okay. Uh, so all we have to do now is see why we're never getting an index value that's not zero. Now there's multiple way reasons why we might always get an index value of zero, right? Um, for example, we might be getting an index value of zero because our texture doesn't have any valid data in it, right? We might be submitting the data incorrectly so that all of the data inside our lookup sampler is actually all zeros, right? That's one way. Another way is if there's something wrong with this expression such that trying to convert it to an integer is not going to work, right? Uh, we're supposed to be getting a floating point value out of here. So in theory, we should be able to convert it to an integer and have it just be the index. But maybe there's something wrong with that. That's thing number two. Thing number three is we've got the voxel position wrong. Um, so the lookup into the voxel position uh, is going to have to work properly here in order to get some value that will actually have something that's not black to begin with. Um, because if we're always looking into a point in the voxel that had no indices, uh, no lights inserted 
hit that part in the voxel, if we, if we uh, never have any indices to work with, then uh, we would be correctly getting an index of zero out of here uh, in that case, right? Meaning if the, if the bin that we end up looking in had no light samples in it, uh, then we would also get a zero out correctly here. So it would be the lookup position that was wrong, not the lookup process. So uh, I think that's really mostly what I'm gonna try and focus on is figuring out which of those is happening. Uh, which is to say, I want to figure out whether our 3D texture lookup works at all. Uh, uh, and then whether or not it's getting converted properly if it does. Uh, so one way we could do this is we could try just drawing this directly. I can't say I can think of a really much of a way to do that. Uh, this would be one place where, like I said, it would be very nice to be able to sort of debug uh, the graphics card because what we really want to do is see a version of that uh, lookup sampler texture using a third party tool so we could uh, sort of corroborate whether or not it had been submitted properly. And unfortunately, we can't do that. So that would have been the easiest way to do it. So barring that, what we need to do now is figure out some way to sort of grab some information out of uh, that, maybe at a known good location. Uh, so maybe what we can do is try to take this part out of the process. Uh, now the way that I can do that is I can try to find a voxel cell that we know has something in it, uh, and that's not that hard to do. Because actually, since we control the lighting code on the CPU side of things, even though we can't debug the GPU side, we can debug the CPU side. What that means is I should be able to, if I switch us back to debug mode in the build, uh, like so, if I go to the render group lighting code here, uh, oops, there we go. Uh, if I go to the render group lighting code, when it's actually outputting these textures, you can see here uh, it's doing the voxel truncation thing and, and looking up uh, and then packing all the values in there. Uh, what I could do here is just take a look at what some of these are. And when I know where some of them are going, I can just force feed that cell address to the renderer. Uh, so that we know we're looking up in a place that definitely has something in it so that we can take that part out. Oh, you know what? I forgot to ever run this though. Ah, um, okay, my bad. I just kind of forgot something fairly obvious there. Uh, yeah, okay, all right. Uh, that was my mistake, and I admit that. That was some operator error. Uh, I had not been running the lighting, so there correctly wasn't anything in the voxel at that point. Uh, so let's try that again. Okay, so now there actually is something in the voxel, uh, so at least now I can correctly say, um, that we're not getting the lookup to work properly. So, all right, that was my bad. Sorry about that. A uh, little bit of a false alarm there. All right, uh, so the problem that we're gonna have here, and I don't really know much, I'm trying to think about how to do this. Uh, I should probably make some way of outputting this piece of information um, a little more cleanly. Because basically what the problem is here is the optimizer has destroyed our way of being able to actually uh, see what these values are. So let's see here, ECX. So EDX, ESI, oh, 
Okay. So XMM0, XMM1, and XMM2 have our X, Y, and Z in them. Uh, let's get those vectors out, please. Uh, so we're looking at, at uh, this, this, and this, it looks like. Uh, can that be right? Oh. Yeah, I can't say I quite expected that. Hold on one brief second. Just one brief second. Uh, I need it to, I want to view this as an F32. I don't know if I can do that. Uh, I guess there is one thing I could do to make this a little bit more uh, expedient. So in here, what I could do is force it to place these somewhere um, that I can view them. So here I've created some global variables. Uh, what I should be able to do now is just assign to those global variables. Uh, I've made them volatile. Uh, and the reason I did that is to try and convince the compiler that it can't get rid of the write. Because if it thinks that there might be another CPU that's reading them at that time, it, it can't know, the optimizer can't go, oh, well, I'm just writing over this value. I won't bother doing it till the end. Um, so I'm basically just trying to keep that from, from happening there. Uh, debug color. So I guess we don't have a volatile version here for this. Uh, what I could do is something like this though, uh, which is if front emit, uh, let's say the red channel is greater than five. All right. So running the lighting here and waiting for there to be a fairly bright light sample to look at here. Uh, what I'm going to do is just take a look at what those debug X, Y, and Z values are. One twenty six, one thirteen, twenty seven, and so what I can do now is just say, well, if that's what the lighting uh, value is going to be, uh, then what I could do is in the OpenGL code. Uh, when we're, you know, doing whatever we're doing here, uh, I can just go ahead and, 
and force that lookup value, right? Uh, so let's see. Let's see what happens if we force it to that. So it looks like we're just not getting any valid values out of that texture at all, right? Um, because in this particular case now, we have forced it to look up into a location where there definitely should have been something, but we're not seeing anything. So it's unlikely that this part then is the problem, uh, although I guess I don't really have a way of independently verifying that we've got those numbers right. Uh, but that does seem like a pretty useful uh, simplification there to just know, all right, we're not, we're not getting something out of there. <laughs> um, we're not getting out anything out of there that we expect. Or at least it doesn't look like it. Uh, so let's go ahead. You know what else I wanted to just check real quickly? This is not related, but the world p values, how are those getting specified here? So that's actually good too, because that's the raw coordinates, which is what we want as well. All right, so I think we can now proceed uh, under the assumption, at least temporarily, that our texture is not getting set up and sampled properly for the lookup. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to here and take a look at that uh, code path one more time. Uh, so here's that lighting lookup. Uh, okay, so the R16, it's telling it's uh, going to be submitted as a GL unsigned short, which I assume is uh, irrelevant anyway because it's not getting submitted at this particular point. Uh, but here's the R16, which is just saying that there's going to be a 16 bit integer value stored there. Uh, so again, presumably we should be able to just access that. Here's the question. If that is stored, that will probably be converted to a zero to one range is the thing. Uh, because it's not stored as a float. We could force it to be stored as a float, right? Like we could. specify this and force a float storage format. But if we're specifying it as that, it's gonna assume that it's normalized, um, which we don't actually want it to do, right? We don't want it to normalize. So that's, that's definitely a problem. We can work around the normalization certainly if we needed to um, by multiplying by 65536 after we load uh, the value out or 65535 depending on how they encoded it. Um, so we could try to get the light index out that way, uh, but that's not really what I want. What I want it to do is I want it to not uh, mess with the value, right? Um, so ideally, Ideally, what we probably want here is uh, like eight, for example, eight UI, right? Uh, something that's going to leave it un,
So you sampler 2D, I don't know if we have access to that. Do we or don't we? Because uh, that's what we would like. Uh, yes, good, we do. So we can use an unsigned integer sampler type here, uh, which would be great, because then we would just get back uh, the integer directly and we wouldn't have to cast. So it looks like we do have access to that. I'm going to go ahead and use that. So what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and get and look up sampler. I want to get that use sampler uh, 3D in there. Uh, and when we sampler for that, it says I'll get a uvec back, which is perfect because that's exactly what I want. Uh, so that way I can just say, oh, thank you for the uh, light information. Uh, and, and off we go. Uh, so then I would use our 16 UI, uh, which is to say it's an unsigned integer. I don't really care if it's unsigned, to be completely honest with you, that's not super important. Um, I just need it to not be floating point. Uh, that's the only real requirement. So uh, if we go ahead and where's my core arb? There it is. Uh, if I just grab I should just grab all of these. All right, so uh, now in theory, if we get this compiling properly, we should be able to get an integer value out, which is what I want. Um, unsigned int. I don't know if the shader forces me to do unsigned in in that fashion. Let's find out. Implicit cast from int to uint. Time. Still doesn't like that. No matching over the code for text fetch. Cannot convert from const float to i for p vector float. Not sure where it's complaining about exactly. Because um, I didn't touch any of the other parts. So texelfetch.r here Unfortunately, I don't really see anything else that I would probably need to do there in order to get that back. I'm Texel fetching. I feel like that should come back properly. I guess I can use this shorthand, which is nice. Um, so if I do uint light i, uh, I would think that that would work. Uh, I don't understand why it wouldn't. 
I can then loop through that. When I do a textl fetch here, this is passing an unsigned integer. Maybe that's bad. Maybe it only can accept an integer, uh, in which case uh, this maybe should be just casted here from an unsigned integer to an integer. Um, and then we can go from there. I don't know, we could try that and see if it's a little happier about what's going on. Because again, we don't really care whether we have integers or unsigned integers in this case. We're not using the full range. Hmm. So we're getting an invalid call on this one. Does this card not support R16 UI? Perhaps? I think that's the only thing that changed. But I'm not sure. So it's just specifying red and unsigned short, which shouldn't be a problem. So presumably this is the only thing that, that could be potentially bad there, right? Um, let's see what happens if I set it to I. Hmm. So it definitely doesn't like that. It doesn't really want to create an R16 UI. Um, I suppose that's not really a problem for us. We don't really care that it's one of those. We could just encode it uh, and use the zero to one range. It's, it's really not a big deal one way or the other. So I guess, you know, let me try uh, leaving it the way that it was since that was something that it was okay with. Uh, and then I'll, I'll forego the fancy footwork in here and just say, all right, when you get one of these back, uh, you're gonna get a integer, uh, but you're gonna get a number between zero and one. Uh, you're gonna have to convert that to something you can actually use to look up. And so we need a way to convert back. Now, if it was 1.0 exactly, uh, then we want to be like 65535, right? Would be the value that we would be. Uh, and presumably, uh, we're going to have a bias in here. Uh, so we would probably also want to uh, just roll that in. Um, I, I'll have to look up exactly what their what their transform is so we can undo it exactly and not have like off by one errors or something like that. Uh, but that's basically what we would need to do uh, to convert it back. Right. Well, that is not reassuring, you know. Uh, maybe that's as good a time.